I grew up in a dysfunctional family. Remember, I kept myself up in my room for a good five days and I didn't even come down to eat during that time um, just because I didn't, I didn't want to see them. I just wanted a family that at least felt like they cared about me, which, you know, I didn't really feel like I had. I'm not saying I was an angel of a child, but, you know, the punishments that I got, they weren't quite um, humane to say. By the time I was 18, always thinking that I'm not good enough, that I just started to not really care anymore. By this point, I was actually moved into a separate building from the house, so I used to sneak off during the night. It got to the point where my parents found out about that, and they decided, well, if you want to go leave the house, you can leave for good, and they sort of kicked me out. As a result of that, I was I kind of left. Uh, no place to go, nothing to my name. Um, I was basically sleeping in a, a grandstand in an oval. Um, you know, sl sleeping with a knife in my pocket because, you know, I, I didn't live in a really good neighbourhood um, and I didn't know what was going to happen. A month or so into my stay at the grandstand, I woke up and I... Uh, because I'd gotten so used to sleeping with a knife at this point, I thought nothing of it. Um, but I woke up later that morning and I'd actually stabbed myself in the leg um, due to having sleeping, been sleeping with the knife. Um, I mean, it wasn't too bad of a gash, but it was pretty deep and it took a while to heal. It, it took me months to actually figure out that there were places like Wyshack about and that could actually help me get from where I was at the absolute bottom of my life to where I am now. Since I've moved out, I've actually made contact with my parents. It's more brought us together. The fact that, you know, I uh, was kicked out and didn't speak to them for 18 months or so. My takeaway from Wyshack was they helped me in the first six months of my stay with them. It really does show how far one can come in very little time if they have the help that they need and they put the effort in. You know, since I've been there, I've only gotten more and more independent. I've uh, gotten my job um, now that I've uh, been at for a few months now. Um, I've been studying a diploma in music. The one thing that I found that wasn't harmful to me in any way that could uh, really um, stabilize me mentally. Um, so I'm currently pursuing a career in music. I really finally feel that I'm on my way to living my best life. I'm Ash, I'm uh, 22, and this is my story.
I'm Jackie. I work as a case coordinator at Wyshack and I have the privilege of sharing Taz's story. I might be one of the youngest people you will ever meet that went into foster care. I was only 13 months old. My siblings were jealous because the family I was with were nice. I didn't get to see my siblings growing up, but the five of us are catching up now. I guess as I grew up, I realised that I was pretty lucky. The foster family I was with were really nice to me. They were nice to the other foster kids too. They might have actually been more lenient on us kids because they knew the stuff we had been through. My biological mum was struggling, I guess, with different issues, and so DCP were involved. The foster home became my real home, and my mum and dad were people that really helped me and were there for me, even when it wasn't easy. I'm not really sure why, but I was an angry teenager. I sometimes wonder why I was that angry, but I don't blame anyone. It was just how it was. When I turned 16, I remember sneaking out at night. I wanted to go to the shops. I ended up doing some painting, graffiti. I went on a bit of a rampage and my mum and dad said that was enough. So I went to a crisis accommodation service where I stayed for five months until I got kicked out. I guess I was going through things. Another night I snuck out and scorched a few things. I didn't light a fire or anything, but I did mark the bed and stuff. My mum and dad had me back again, but I stole some of my mum's money, so I had to leave. After that, I stayed with my sister for four months, and then I ended up at Wyshack. I ended up at Wyshack because I had gone from my sister's house, which was too crowded. I was 18 when I encountered Wyshack. Wyshack helped me to learn. They wouldn't just do things for me. Like Dennis, he taught me how to cook. I really wanted to learn how to cook chicken carbonara, so Dennis helped me do that. He made me do each step. He just talked me through how to. Then Fee, she was easy to talk to and really liked me. She kept teaching and reminding me about keeping my room neat and tidy. I knew how to do it, I just didn't want to. But the workers didn't let me just do nothing. But they talked to me nicely and didn't lose their patience with me. They would remind me all the time to have showers and wash my hair. My best memory of Wyshack was when you all got together and came with me to Dome when it was my last day. I was able to have a meal and they got me a cake, but I don't eat cake. I think they all liked it though. It was nice to be with the people who helped me. Even Janet, who does the art group, came and gave me a handmade card. It was special. Just going to Dome with everyone made me feel happy because it showed you all cared about me. Everyone told me something they liked and valued about me and it was special. Wyshack is different because they didn't kick me out. The workers talked through what was happening. Ricky guided me and never got mad. Just talked stuff through. No one made me feel small. Wyshack helped me into TAFE and checked in to see how I was going and if I was going. And if I didn't, you just asked why and you still didn't get mad. We just talked it all through. I guess that's helped me to be who I really want to be now, and I'm so grateful for that.
When I was seven, my mum passed away. So we ended up having to move over from Geraldton to Perth. I lost a lot of contact with part of my family at that time. Um, my dad met my stepmom. So at the time, they ended up having two more children. Um, we had quite a big family. There were eight kids in total. Um, it was a bit difficult growing up because there was a lot of fighting. Um, My family, especially between my mum and my stepdad, fought quite a bit. It ended up being not a very stable environment. Um, I also struggled quite a bit at school, just with, because um, I was a bit different. It was hard to make friends. Um, growing up, I used a technique called maladaptive daydreaming which just ended up basically meaning I was daydreaming like to an extent that I wasn't really focused on anything else, but I think I was still grieving the loss of my mum. It was difficult to kind of get through life when there was a lot of, there was no, there wasn't a lot of stability. So it was mostly just trying to get through the day. Um, at 19, while I was coming towards the end of my stay at a youth hostel, I, me and my caseworker came across Wyshack, which um, was pretty much what I was looking for at the time. It was, at that time, I really needed to learn more about my mental health and get the hang of it. I was really needing to learn more about life skills in general, just being able to look after myself and make it out there. So we came across Wyshack and they pretty much from what we were reading, they had a lot of what we, what I was looking for. I learnt basic skills that I missed out on growing up. I was, was able to relax properly, um, enjoy myself, freely come out and figure out what I was doing. There were other young people like me who were in similar situations. Um, at that time, I really needed that, but it was also really nice to be around other young people who were going through the same kind of thing as me. Um, I started to get a, quite a bit of confidence from there, just being able to interact with other people my age and that were able to kind of, yeah, understand what, what I was going through. While I was at Wyshack, I got to take part in different classes and activities, just on things to do with mental health, how I could um, ground myself, how I could... I learned that I didn't have to necessarily break down to receive help. I could keep going and then um, I could turn to someone for help and pick myself up rather than having to break down. Mm. For anyone that's considering looking at moving into Wyshack, or becoming part of their transitional accommodation, I say go for it. Um, whether you're really ready to get out there and start learning, um, start being able to look after yourself, or if you're still just, you're still new, you're still trying to get the hang of it, um, it will be okay. It's Feel free to just come in, let them know what's going on, let them know what you're looking to gain, and they'll help you out 110%. Despite what's happened in the past with everything, I've still got my family, I've got my friends, and I've still got my supports. And I don't feel the same kind of hopelessness that I once did. I feel a lot more prepared and ready to be able to get out there. I feel like I can take more chances. Hi, I'm Erin. I'm 24 years old, and this is my journey through Wyshack.
I did not know that, no. <laughs> it's so my name is Tyler McKenna. I'm age 21. I was born and raised in Perth. And for a brief period of my life, I was homeless, in and out of it. I'd say my childhood was very traumatic. And there was a lot going on between me, my siblings, and my parents. And all these things eventually led into the life that I'd end up living and becoming homeless. When I was growing up, I went through the foster care system. I stayed with several group homes. And as I would travel from house to house, suffered a lot of different experiences. And I definitely learned that feeling of understanding when a place is safe. I almost had like a sixth sense for it. When we were first suffering from homelessness, it was more of a couch surfing term at first, being able to stay with friends here and there. Although nothing is ever that simple, things ended up becoming worse. Eventually it was sleeping on the streets. It was having to do harder stuff to get by day to day. Uh, simple things like going to the toilet, going to the shower was not accessible day to day. And it was frustrating. It was painful, traumatic, but it was also a learning experience, I would say. I think when people think of youth homelessness, I feel like there's only one to two sides that most people usually think of, which is either thinking that they're in a extremely terrible situation and that life is unbearable because they are homeless teenagers, or that these people have essentially brought it upon themselves, which I think th those are the two most common views that I've seen growing up and experiencing homelessness. And it really is unfortunate because both of those situations are never what it is. Everybody has their own individual stories, everything they go through, ups and downs. Nobody is just homeless because of a single act and nobody is just going through that with a single thought in their mind. So I would say a lot of people's outlook on youth homelessness, I'd say be more open-minded to it and definitely look into it because there's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of services out there that will even tell you themselves what these kids are, what these kids are like, what these kids do, and they're amazing. At the end of the day, they're amazing. <laughs> Wyshag definitely taught me a lot. Um, so obviously growing up with a lot of youth homelessness and uh, even my previous lifestyle, I didn't know how to use a uh, washing machine. <laughs> I uh, did not know how to use or how to properly cook meals, I should say. Uh, more than just that, to uh, cleaning as well. I guess when you're on the streets, the most cleaning you do is maintaining your own rubbish around whatever area you sleep. So if you're moving into a house for the first time, there's a lot to learn with cleaning. So I'm now living by myself, my own accommodation, my first own accommodation, my first rental that Wyshack helped me get. So without them, wouldn't be there. So. My main focus for a career path, I would say, is to become a youth worker, whether that is for, I think in my mind, mostly youth homelessness, for more distressed kids as to what I went through. I think it would be great to be able to, from that child's point of view, to be able to understand the youth worker that speaks to you and to know that they have been through a similar situation would be amazing. So I think I would say to anybody who's been through a similar situation to me, just search for the help. The help is out there. The support is always out there. And don't, don't let life get the better of you because things might seem bad, but things always get better. So I'm really excited to be where I am today. I'm really happy that I've received all of the support that I have throughout the years. Now, honestly, one of the highest points of my life. I couldn't be happier. And I wish the best for anybody else that's going through the same thing and everybody that works in these organisations as well, because they're amazing. Everybody is. <laughs>
My childhood was fairly normal. Normal until it wasn't. My mum was diagnosed with cancer. This was hard for me to deal with. My mum and dad had to focus on her recovery, so I went to live with my nan and pop, so I didn't feel like a bother. But when I was there, my pop had a heart attack and I walked into the lounge and found him there. Another really hard event to deal with. I coped with life through self-harming and at one point I attempted suicide. In 2013, I spent some time couch surfing and sleeping in my car, mostly because I was struggling with maintaining a relationship with my family. I had some issues with mental health and was accessing a few services, including spending time at Bentley Mental Health. I think back now and it dawned on me how difficult it would have been for my family to understand my self-harm and my eating disorder. But at the time, it was an escape a way to cope. I first came to Wyshack when I was 17 after a friend called and told me there was a vacancy there. The day before arriving at Wyshack, I had attended a funeral of my friend who had just died from suicide. It's safe to say my first week was a struggle. I remember how helpful people were, in particular with me going to work. I would have to leave the Wyshack house at such early times and the staff would turn the security alarm off so that I could go out without waking everyone up. Another special moment was when I first came to Wyshack. It was close to Christmas and I wasn't sure how that would be. It might be one of my best Christmas memories ever. Jeremy gave us an invitation to join him on a Christmas adventure. He'd made a Christmas treats. He had Christmas CDs in the car and took us all to look at the lights in the suburbs. I didn't want to go at first, but it really was such a fun time. We came back to the house, decorated the tree, and then watched the Gremlins movie. I don't think I will ever forget that night. I think back on my time at Wyshack, and I remember being able to wander up to the house to sit in the office with some of the workers and just do my assignments. When I was going to uni, I was really struggling with anxiety. They would help me out, get me up to Joondalup by driving me up, and sometimes they would just sit at a table around the campus while I was in a lecture. They would actually sit there waiting for me. I began to feel like I was accepted for who I am. Today, I am now working full time and really enjoy the work I do. I work as a nurse. I had always wanted to help people and now in my work, I get to make an impact in people's lives, which is just so rewarding. My name is Rebecca and this was my story. Sharing Rebecca's story is one of many, but the stories that each of these young people bring is a story of courage and strength. And we at Wyshack have the privilege of, serving, of standing beside young people through those journeys. Um, yeah. People are similar to stained glass windows. Their true beauty can only be seen when the light comes from within, even in the midst of darkness. Oh, my name's John Thompson. I'm the General Manager of Statewide Services at Anglicare WA. I've been a youth worker for 21 years, um, working in 
communities across Scotland and, and here in Perth as well, really focusing on poverty uh, and, and social justice. One of the best things about working with young people is how individual they are, uh, how individual their goals and, and hopes and aspirations are. And the best thing about being a youth worker is that you get to hear all of those goals and support young people to help get there. The impact that we have across Anglicare WA's youth services uh, is hundreds of young people every year. And being part of that service, being part of all those young people's journeys is something that I think you, you can't get anywhere else. YSHAC is a service that Anglicare WA has delivered since 1997. It existed before that as, as other organisations and, and when we took it on, we brought it right through now um, to 2022. It offers both crisis and transitional accommodation for young people, so that's short stay, I need somewhere to stay right now, tonight as well as longer term accommodation for young people to start to build their way towards education, employment, training, other forms of stable housing. One of the hardest things for us to understand is how many young people are homeless in Western Australia on any one night. It's a very difficult number to count because youth homelessness looks quite different to what many people think of when they think about homelessness. Fewer than 10% of the overall homelessness population are living on the street, living rough. So more than 90% is hidden. And what that means for young people is couch surfing, moving between family, friends, in unstable, unsafe, overcrowded environments. There are young people living in hostels across the city, uh, young people trying to get a night in a hotel somewhere, then the rest of the week on the street. We've heard stories about young people sleeping in the university library while they're trying to study for their degree. Um, and so it's a really difficult number to understand. What we do know is that for services like YSHAC, in the last two years, we've only be, been able to provide support to around 10% of the young people who, who need us. And that's purely about capacity. There are so few beds comparatively across Perth uh, for young people who experience in homelessness, for the number that there are. And when you consider Anglicare offers 140 units of accommodation to young people every night, and through our outreach services, we support over another 100 young people. So every day, there are 250 young people in contact with our services. More than 500 a year we support. The discrimination that young people face systematically across the private rental market because of their lack of rental experience means that it's really, really difficult for services like YSHAC for, uh, to find somewhere for young people to go. Sometimes we are dealt with moments in life where everything changes irreversibly. But we must remember that all is not lost. Even if it is just a glimmer, there can be hope found in the pain and the suffering. It produces courage and resilience. A lot of the things we hear when we talk to people about homelessness is that it's somehow a choice. Uh, particularly for young people, they talk about troubled youth. Uh, they, they equate homelessness with youth disorder maybe things that they see in the media about the entertainment precincts in Perth, young people moving around, they don't really understand the true picture of youth homelessness. The reality is that for more than half of the young people that we work with, it's because home isn't a safe place to be. So family breakdown is the number one cause of homelessness for more than 50% of, of young people. And for women of any age in Australia experiencing homelessness, family and domestic violence is, the, is, the, is the, the primary reason for homelessness. And what we've seen since 2019 um, is a, a significant increase in the number of young people who report family and domestic violence as their primary reason for seeking support. One of the things we, we see with an experience of homelessness is that the most difficult thing to overcome is the isolation and the sense of loneliness. Um, 
a lot of people struggle to find empathy for a person experiencing homelessness because they don't know that person. There are lots of other social issues that we see in our community that touch on all of our lives and we might know someone, we might lend a helping hand. And homelessness is a very lonely and isolating experience. What we would like to do is really shift people's view on homelessness and think about how you can help. Maybe it's just saying hello to someone, maybe it's educating yourself about services like YSHAC and what's available, so that when you hear those conversations, you think, well, I wonder what does that person need from me? What might I be able to help with? We're not asking everyone to become a youth worker or a social worker or to, to make this your career, but there are small actions that all of us can take in our everyday life to reduce that experience of isolation and loneliness for people who are doing it tough. One of the things that Wyshack has done incredibly well is to understand the experience of homelessness from the young person's perspective and communicate that back to the people who pay for the service and make really meaningful changes to the engagement and the length of engagement with young people. And what we do now is that really that individual approach that we take means that young people can stay almost for as long as they need. And well, you might think, well, how does that help the flow through for other young people that are experiencing homelessness? There's a natural period of growth that young people go through at YSHAC, and so they're not going to stay for five years. They're always going to want to grow, move on, find the next opportunity. So the average stay for young people would be less than a year. For some young people, it's a little bit more, and for some young people, it's a lot less because this individualised experience means that they can stay for as long as they need us, and when they feel like they don't need us anymore, we'll help them find the next opportunity. Young people who were experiencing homelessness in the past used to continually have to move on to other accommodation services, and we would see young people that had been through four or five other crisis accommodation services before they came to us, and that doesn't promote healing, it's not, it doesn't promote safety, and it's not a place from which young people can make meaningful progress towards their goals. We never want to exit young people back into homelessness, and so this individualised approach for YSHAC with essentially an indefinite length of stay means that young people can focus on their goals, not focusing on where they're going to live next, and that's our job. We must choose to go on, to embrace our true selves with fractures and imperfections and then go on to help others on their journey. Every life can have a chance at restoration. Sometimes it just takes a little light to find hope. <laughs>